So for this project, I started with my amber tumbled glass. This is glass I've picked up at garage sales and thrift stores, broken up and tumbled in my tumbler for up to a week. Now this project could more easily be done on stained glass and you would get a smoother cut with a stained glass tool um, to cut it. But I really wanted to use this amber glass, so that's why I'm doing it this way. So I went ahead and I traced out a fish on each of my pieces of amber glass, and then I cut it up with my nipper tool. So when using the nipper tool, sometimes the glass will come out more jagged, especially with this um, glass is fairly thick, much thicker than the stained glass. So I, I am going to have to take it outside and use my grinder to kind of smooth it out a little bit. So here I am out in the garage and I'm just going ahead and smoothing the edges down on each of them. And like I said, this is a lot thicker than a piece of stained glass. Um, some of the pieces are probably almost twice as thick. After I wash it with soap and water, I take some rubbing alcohol to get any of the marker marks off of it. Make it even smoother, you could throw it back into your tumbler for up to a week. I did not do that. Here I'm just getting the fins and the tails on the fish. So next I decide I'm going to paint them with UV resin. And what I do is I use some UV resin, I use some glitter, and I use some blue mica powder. And I mix that all together in a little container. And I'm going to use this to paint some blue stripes on each of the fish. Once I get the stripes on there, then I go ahead and I stick it under the UV lamp. And um, this UV lamp, I believe, you can just put on for a minute at a time. It's kind of a pain. Then it goes off and you turn it back on again. And then while that's sitting under the UV light, I go ahead and mix up another UV concoction of UV resin and gold glitter. And with that, I'm painting the tail and the fins for each of the fish. And I also go ahead and use that in between the blue stripes on the fish. So this is kind of a pain because every time you do a side of anything, and you have to do both sides because you're going to see the fish from both sides, you have to stick it um, back under the UV light for one, two, three minutes each piece, and they still seem to be sticky. And of course, here I am painting the stripes on the other side because, like I said, you're going to see the fish from both sides in this project. And um, it's, it's just not a real fast process, even though I have this in fast forward. So I'm wondering if there's a stronger UV light. This is a real tiny one about the size of a mouse, a computer mouse, that is. Once those were all dry, I started to mix my resin up. So the resin I'm using for this project is J Diction resin. So I bought the actually bought the wrong resin. I ended up I wanted the four hour demold, twenty four hour cure, and by accident I bought the four hour demold, eight to ten hour cure. And um, I didn't realize I kind of read the instructions, but I guess not all of them because what you're supposed to do is heat up separately. Um, part A and part B before you mix them together and I did not do that. It seemed to turn out okay but there was some um, I don't know flaws like on the top of it so I don't know if that had something to do with it. Nothing bad or anything but um, this resin is just more complicated and sets up a lot faster. Started letting the resin sit in the cup for 10 to 15 minutes so that some of the bubbles will come to the top and dissipate and there won't be as many when I pour it. So after it was all mixed and it had sat for about 10 minutes then I poured part of it into the mold and kind of um, moved the mold around to spread it out and then I used my kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles and then I started setting up the project. I used some blue reflective glass that I had picked up from Michaels. This is more like a fire glass. It's a little chunkier than their crushed glass, but they do have this up there all the time. And I also used some white stones that I had picked up a bag of at the Dollar Tree. Then I put in some stained glass. This is stained glass that I had previously cut and I believe even tumbled, but it certainly doesn't need to be tumbled because this is going to be totally submerged in 
the resin. There's no um, chance of anybody cutting themselves. Then I went ahead and I assembled the fish. And uh, the silly thing was at the last minute, I <laughs> remembered I didn't put the eyes on. So um, the other thing I put on there was bubbles. I have these little clear plastic beads um, that I had picked up on Amazon and they work perfect for bubbles. And the only problem is when I poured the rest of the resin on, it, uh, it things started floating around. So I really kind of had to babysit it for a little while to push things back in place because, um, but it was good that it was a fast curing resin because I didn't have to do it for too long. Of course, I used the kitchen torch again to get rid of bubbles and I came back multiple times. Sometimes the bubbles will cling on to the sides and if you can just kind of push them away from the sides, um, they'll dissipate. And when you come back, say every 10 minutes for the first half hour, a lot of times the bubbles will raise to the top and you can hit them again with the kitchen torch. Sometimes you do have to go in with a toothpick to do it. So um, I did end up coming back and putting the little eyes These were on. made with a sequin and a little black bead and that worked out perfect. So I decided to try another one. This time um, I was going to do it a little bit different. I used my other resin, which is not J. Diction, but it's called Craft Resin Creative Liquid. It's crystal clear. And um, this is also a resin that has no VOCs. It is a fast curing resin, 24 hours. I do like fast curing resins, but remember a lot of the fast curing resins can cause fish eyes on canvas. They're best off for glass on glass and in molds. And although they do seem to have fewer bubbles in the beginning, the bubbles that they do create seem to be more difficult to get rid of. So anyway, I mixed together this resin. It's the, the same situation, one-to-one -one ratio. Mix for three minutes slowly. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then I poured it into the mold. In the meanwhile, I had made a few more fish by cutting them out the same way that I did with the previous project. This time I decided I was going to put red stripes on them, and I am using an oil-based marker. I've had problems with resin before with regular permanent markers, so I have never with the oil-based, so that's all I buy now are the oil-based. So these fish I decided I was going to do a different way. So I put the, I went ahead and painted the stripes on with the marker instead of using the UV resin. And I'm actually not going to be using any UV resin for these fish because it was such a pain. So um, I'm going to be using Elmer's glue mixed with the gold glitter and try that out and see if that isn't easier. That way you don't have to wear a mask, you don't have to wear gloves, you don't have to, you know, worry about any problems. And then I just went ahead and painted it on all the fish. Um, I really do like the look of the UV resin a little bit better. I felt like it didn't go on as clumpy as this did. It could have been just because I had too much glitter on it. I'm not sure, but um, this certainly was much easier to do. I also had a piece of stained glass that I had previously cut and tumbled, but I went ahead and cut a couple more pieces out of that just um, so that I could make a couple pieces of seagrass. And, and I kind of did this in a hurry. I don't know if all the pieces came out great, but I ended up with my three pieces that I needed. For these fish, I ended up using these little fish eyes that I picked up on Amazon. There's five of those cards with a total of 200 eyes for $8 on Amazon. And um, you can use them for all sorts of craft projects. And a lot of people use them on their fishing lures to make them look more realistic. And they're three-dimensional and they're real cute. So the resin that I had poured in the morning had kind of set up. I wanted it to... Um, to have just a thin layer of resin on the bottom so that the glass didn't sink all the way to the bottom. So I mixed up some more resin and here you can see all the bubbles in it. So I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and um, a lot of those bubbles will come to the top and they will dissipate and you won't have as many bubbles when I pour it in. 
So I start putting this uh, project together and I'm using some uh, red glass that I had painted last week with the cry no with the Tamiya spray paint and I guess it's pronounced Tamiya spray paint and then I also have some fire glass some gold reflective fire glass then I put the rest of the glass in and this resin has set up a bit and it is a little bit sticky straightening them out a little bit hit it with the torch and then I add all the little bubbles so these are little clear beads that I picked up on Amazon that come in three different sizes so I use the smaller one at the bottom and the largest one at the top and then I have mixed up more resin and I believe this was eight ounces and I pour it over everything and because the resin was sticky underneath it did, uh, nothing moved like in my previous project <laughs> so everything just stuck there in the resin so I didn't really have to worry about it and um, then I went ahead and I used the torch to get rid of all of the bubbles so of course this has to sit on a flat level surface overnight and it's in your best interest to cover it with a dust cover to prevent any sediment from going in there so this particular resin is to set at 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit while it's curing. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. So here we go again with fish tank or fish bowl number three. And with this one, I use the same crystal clear resin, craft resin. And what I did was I poured about four ounces of resin in the bottom of the mold and let it set up overnight. Then the next day, after it was completely set, I took resin tape and I put a straight line over the very top. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to pour blue resin below the tape line, or actually over the whole thing, but it will not stick to where I put the tape line. I want it to appear like fish in water in a fish bowl. And so here I go again with the same resin, mixing a little mica powder in it. And I really had to mix this because there was a lot of um, little sediment. And then I go ahead and I pour it in and I put some stones. It's actually crust, crushed shells that were colored blue. And again, the stained glass for the seagrass and a little bit of shells and then the fish. And these fish, I did the same way as the thin red lined fish, only I did thin blue lines. And of course, I used the torch to get rid of the bubbles. And then I add my little clear bubbles and I go ahead and I let it set overnight. So the next day when it was not quite all the way set it wasn't gooey or sticky but it was um you could kind of uh feel it it was soft and i took my razor blade and i went along the line that i had put the tape on just below that line so what i'm trying to do is um, pull the tape up and you'll see the clear resin at the very top and the blue resin will be below the tape line and it actually worked I almost wish I had made the blue a little bit darker blue but it worked so next I took a little bit of the Rolio mica powder and put it on a little um, oh a little makeup brush thing and I just went along the very top of the water line just to make it a little more prominent um, I'm not sure if it did much, but um, that's what I did. And then, although I didn't film it, I took another five ounces of resin and poured that over the top, and it filled in that top area, and let it set overnight. And then we took it out to the garage, and my son cut the top off of it with a table saw, and we did this to make it look like a fishbowl. And... <laughs> Because the top then was uh, not shiny, I took it into the back room and I used UV resin a little bit on my finger and just went over the very top of it and used the UV light to set it. And then it was just as shiny on the top as it was on the sides. And then here's all three of them side by side done. And I think they turned out so cute. 
And I think it does look like a little fish bowl with the fish in it with the water. I thought maybe I should have made the water a little darker, but really when you think about it and you look at a fish in the fish bowl, the water is pretty much the same color. <laughs> hey everyone. <laughs> oh, I can see in the camera that you can't even see these from here. I'm wondering if I put like this behind them if you can see them better i have no idea maybe if i push them back a little bit they're so small can you see them <laughs> anyway so um i think they all turned out cute i just really wanted to experiment with the water so i started out by making them and this is the first one with the resin that i don't know if you can see the difference i don't feel like it's this is the crystal clear resin and this is the D j diction eight hour um cure and can you see the difference this is foggy and this is clear crystal clear <laughs> So um, they both turned out cute though, but that UV resin that I used on the very first one uh, was a pain in the butt. So um, I was trying to think of other ways you could do it, like with the um, markers and with the clear Elmer's glue and the glitter. And, I, but the thing that I liked about the UV resin was how you could put it on thicker and it kind of made it uh, stick out a little bit more, the, the blue. And I was thinking maybe you could get like a glittery puff paint and do that on there. And I thought that might be pretty. But anyway, I think, I think they turned out cute and I think they look nice. I really like this um, stand for it to go in. And these are a little bit fatter than the other ones. Oh, here's the back of it. Remember how I said you could see it from the front and the back? It looks the same. There you go. <laughs> so I think that's kind of cool. You can put it on display somewhere where you see the back and the front, um, just depending on where you are. And this is also another <laughs> idea for a stand. These were only a buck up at a place called the Christmas Tree Store. But I think you can find these other places. It's a clear stand that you could put it in if you're trying to save money. Because that other stand that I got on Amazon, I believe it was like $18. So I think. But I'll link it in the description. So if you're trying to save money, which we all are because of how expensive the resin can be, um, you might want to just use the clear plastic one for a dollar. And then... Um, the final one, I think this turned out cute. Now, I guess a fish bowl maybe comes up a little more. I don't know. And so I was trying to think of other ways to do the blue. See, it's hard to see the blue like this, isn't it? Um, I was trying to think of other ways. So maybe you could put a, a layer of resin on and then paint it with some kind of a blue um mica powder i don't know but the mica powder would probably be too dark and so this is what it's like from the back you can still see the blue and you can see the fish through it here you can see the fish a little bit better because it has clear resin over it but i think they turned out kind of cute um i don't know i th i think it's cute um, what do you guys think? What would be another way to create the blue water line? And you could see when I was pulling that um, tape off, it was kind of um, sticking and tearing it a little bit. But that tearing kind of created a little bit of an uneven line there, which I think made it look more realistic like water, you know, like a little unevenness there. But if you're trying to create a very straight line, I guess I would let the resin set a few more hours because this is a fast curing resin. And somebody was asking me that question about on a flag, they wanted to create a dark blue line and wanted to know how to do that. So this would be a way, a way to do it, to uh, put tape where you don't want the resin. And I guess you would do the same at the very top and then you'd have a clear line there or an empty line you could pour a darker blue resin in it that was for a flag i think for the police officers anyway um that's off the subject but um 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, let me know what other ways you could do, you know, create that um, different color in the resin, because this is, um, I mean, very, very translucent. You can barely see the difference, which is what you would see in a normal fishbowl. You really wouldn't see uh, much of a difference between the this color and this color, maybe just a little. Anyway, um, it was a fun project to try. And uh, if you guys um, have any comments or questions, please ask. We got the Facebook group going now. People are posting all their projects. I wish more people would post projects. There's like a 1,300 people in the Facebook group and there's probably about 20 people posting projects. So I don't know what all the other people are doing, but um, <laughs> but anyway, it's fun. And it's a place where you can ask questions. There's a lot of people who have been doing this a lot longer than I have and have um, you know all sorts of ideas and they can answer your questions. So um, anyway, go ahead and join us. And if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel. If you want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe and you'll be notified. And I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.